Today, you are going to learn what Tailwind CSS is and how it works. And if I ever seem a little bit distracted, it is because my dog, Ragnar, he's being a little needy right now. So I might have to give him some attention, but it looks like he just laid down like a good boy. So to continue this Tailwind CSS, in this video, we're going to do an introduction to it, what it is, how it works, and so show you some examples of it. This is going to be the first video of several videos that I'm going to create on Tailwind. I think it's a, a great project and a great library that you can use to style your application. So getting started here, I do have a project on GitHub. It is at code Ryan Solomon forward slash Tailwind that you can clone and then start up. And that is going to start up this website right here that I've created using Next.js. And it already has Tailwind set up within it. And we're going to kind of use this as you know for me for different notes that i want to make regarding tailwind and then also we're going to use the same project to show you different examples of how tailwind works here so let's get started here with tailwind is a css framework packed with built-in classes allowing you to style your applications you effectively install tailwind and then add these classes to your html or jsx in react's case to style your apps. It works by scanning your HTML files and JavaScript components for class names, generates the corresponding styles, and then writes them to a CSS file. Effectively, Tailwind has all of these kind of pre-built utility classes that it already has in place. So within your React components or really any HTML classes, you can add these pre-built specific Tailwind classes to that HTML, and then that is going to add different CSS to it. Like you might add flex as a class name, and that is going to make that element display flex. So rather than adding a class name and then needing to go create a CSS file and target that class name, use a selector to select that class name, and then you write the CSS for that. All you do is to your HTML, you write the Tailwind class name and then Tailwind will automatically include that CSS or that class name that you wrote. And one benefit of this is this can make it easy to remain consistent when it comes to your styling. You don't need to worry so much about having several developers working in several different style sheets, using different classes for everything, which is a headache and a half if you've ever been in that position. And Tailwind also removes any unused CSS automatically. This results in good performance with most Tailwind applications shipping less than 10 kilobits of CSS code. Additionally, you don't need to mess around with media queries. You can effectively add mobile styles right into your markup. Different element states can also be done quite easily. So within Tailwind, it automatically re removes any CSS that you don't use, which makes it you know more performant and I've worked in professional applications to where there's most definitely unused CSS being shipped to the browser, which anytime you can ship less code to the browser, it's probably a good thing for the performance of your application. And then also Tailwind classes support responsive design. So you don't need to go and use media queries when using Tailwind. You can add that responsive design within your class names, within your HTML, just how you do everything else in Tailwind. And then Tailwind also uses the latest features and promises to stay up to date with modern CSS. So with that kind of overview there, it might not be totally clear how Tailwind is actually working here. So let me actually go to my project here. And I have this header component within Next.js. This isn't necessarily specific to Next.js. This will look very similar if you're using Tailwind in any other project. But here within Next.js, so it uses React. So the only kind of React or Next.js specific thing here is that in React, this is actually JSX. It's not HTML, so it needs to use class name instead of just class. But in other HTML markup, this would just be class and it would work very similarly here. So within this header component, I have written out these different classes for this unordered list. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually remove all of this here and we're going to just style this ourselves. So let me go back. And as you can see, I do have my unordered list here, but this is probably not how you want your header to look like I want it how I had it before. I want it nicely kind of displayed across my page here. I want 
to use position absolute so it's not adding this scroll bar just because of the header i want to have a little bit of padding around these so how can we do this using tailwind well what we can do like I showed you, is we can use Tailwind classes. And if you want to see all the different Tailwind classes, you can see that at Tailwind Docs. So it's going to be tailwindcss.com forward slash docs. And over here on the left side here, they have all of their different classes. And future videos, we're going to cover these core concepts here. But we can see all these different classes to where, for example, if you want to add different CSS display properties, then you can use the class name of block, and that's going to set something to display block. So you add this class to your markup after you already have Tailwind installed and configured for your project, and then you can just add block to a class, and that is going to make that element display block. Or if I wanted to make that element a flex element or a display flex box, I just add the class of flex. So I do, in this instance, want to make this unordered list a flex box. So I'm going to add flex as a class name. And then if I come back here and I look at my header, what you're going to see is this does make it now a flex box because it automatically displays them horizontally. With Tailwind, since I already have it installed and configured within this application, I can use these class names and I don't need to go and write custom CSS for this unordered list in which I would have to make a selector that is dot flex and then use CSS properties that sets display flex. Tailwind automatically does that for me. But for any classes or CSS that I don't use, Tailwind's not going to ship all that CSS. It's going to optimize that for you here. So I'm making this class name is equal to flex. So that makes this unordered list display flex. Now, what if I want to go ahead and make this to be justify content evenly across my page, which I do want. To. Well, we can head back to the Tailwind docs here. If I head down to Flexbox and Grid and I go to justify content here, well, I want to justify content evenly. So I want to add this CSS property. But in Tailwind, all I need to do is add the class of justify evenly. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna add another class to this unordered list, justify evenly. And then I come back and let's look at my application here. And now I see that these are evenly spaced across my top of my page here. But I also want to add a little bit of padding to these. So let's go back to the Tailwind CSS docs. Let's go down to the spacing section. I'm gonna to go to padding. And I just want to add like a padding of 20 pixels maybe across. So padding zero pixels would be P hyphen zero. So if I come back to VS Code and I do P hyphen 20, that's gonna add a padding of 20 pixels to my header here. And that is a bit too much. So let's just do 10 and see how this looks. And that looks much better. So that gets me pretty far, but I also want to make this position absolute because I don't like how it pushes down my content and gives me this scroll bar here. So let's head back to my Tailwind docs. And if I go to position, I can see that I can just add absolute here to add position absolute. So I'm going to grab this. And as you can see here, we are basically just looking up these different CSS properties that we want to add to this element and then seeing what they're called in Tailwind. And then we don't have to write any of the CSS for this. We don't have to worry about another developer having another utility class doing different things and reusing a bunch of this code and like duplicating it and having just poor design. We have this all here kind of out of the box for us. So once you use Tailwind more, you won't have to like continuously look up what is setting Flexbox, what is doing this, what is doing that. And you'll just kind of remember them off the top of your head and it will go much quicker. But this is also for example purposes to show you how this works. So since we made this position absolute, it also shrunk the width down to just as much as it needed to for the content. So now we may need to make this width as 100 viewport width is what I want to do here. So we can go to width and I'm not really sure where that is. So I'm going to go width and then let's go width. And then I want to do viewport width. 
So width of 100 VW is W hyphen screen in Tailwind. So let's go ahead and add that here because I want this UL to have 100 VW as a CSS property. So I need to add the Tailwind class of W hyphen screen. If I go back to my app, you can see I now have my header kind of back in action here. Now, before we move on to the utility first concept, let me show you just quickly how you can change a different state of an element within Tailwind. So the state of hover, for example, and this could also be like if you mouse over or if you click on something or if an element is active, you can do all this within Tailwind as well. So when I hover over my list items, what I want to do is maybe change the, the background text a little bit to, I don't know, it'll, it'll be a surprise. So the way that we can do this is if I come to hover and then I click on handling hover, you can see that all I need to do is add hover colon and then I can add what I want to use as my different style. So here, when you hover on this button in this example, it is setting the background to a different color. I think this is like some sky blue color, but I want to set the color. I don't want to set the background. So let me see to set color, text color, text hyphen black, text hyphen white, text hyphen slate and that is going to be a different color but let's do something maybe like a blue color is what i would kind of like to do let's do teal here so to set it as this teal color here i can set it to text hyphen teal hyphen 500 so i'm going to grab this and now when i hover over my list item i want to make it that teal color so for this li here i'm going to do class name and if this wasn't in React or Next.js, you just add class. But I'm going to do hover colon and then text teal hyphen 500. So then if I come back to my application and I hover over my different elements, you see it gives them this teal color. So Tailwind CSS, it is a CSS framework that has a bunch of these different utility classes that you can use out of the box. And then within your markup, your HTML, you can just add these different classes and you will automatically be applying these pre-built Tailwind CSS properties to those different elements. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of the benefits of Tailwind, how it works and how it can be so powerful. We definitely have more things to understand about Tailwind. So in our next video, we're going to cover the concept of Tailwind being utility first. And then we will get to handling states in a little bit more depth, responsive design, customization, and some different concepts that you should know. So thanks for tuning into this and I will see you in that next one.